Oh, hello and welcome to the Theatre of Dreams, your definitive destination for all the action and analysis from the 2018 World Cup. I'm Rahul Dalal and I have two-time I-League winning coach Ashley Westwood uh, here with me. Uh, and we must admit, Ashley, that uh, in terms of our predictions for Tuesday's matches, we didn't really uh, hit the mark. Those wins for Japan and Senegal have added that missing element, uh, you know, of the underdogs getting a big win at this World Cup, haven't they? Yeah, for sure. And it gives all the other underdogs a, a chance and, and a bit of belief. Um, it was certainly a, a coupon buster, as we call them back home, a, a betting disaster if you was uh, tipping the favourites. But, you know, when big incidents in games happen in the first few minutes, like the Colombian game, uh, it's always going to be up against it. And it just shows you that you can never, never quite predict what's going to happen in football and it, it can be a strange game at times. Absolutely. Portugal, Spain and, uh, 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 and Uruguay are in action today. We're going to build up to those three matches just a bit ahead on the show. And I'm going to get, go over to Ashley now to speak about that match because, uh, Ashley, it was an, another result that we didn't quite uh, expect. Uh, a convincing performance from Russia and, uh, you know, a bit of flair in it as well, not, uh, you know, not nicking a... ...side of the Russians now, obviously eight goals in two games is a fantastic return. I think they were fortunate playing the Saudis in the first game. Uh, obviously, we see some, some terrible defending by Saudi Arabia and, and that's really lifted the Russian side and given some real confidence. You know, they're playing with, with flair as well. They've got a nice interchangeable system with the 4-2-3-1. They're using that fairly well. They've also got the added dimension of Zuba up front, who's a big striker. And like I say, they're scoring goals for fun. So it's uh, now all of a sudden, I think the nation are believing that Obviously, these now are, are, are certainties to get out of the group, but they're now believing there's a, there's a chance to go a little bit further. What might hamper them is that, obviously, Group A play Group B, so they might end up facing Spain or Portugal in the next mm. round, which could be tough for them. Uh, you expected, uh, you know, a lot more from Egypt, didn't you, uh, in the match yesterday? Because they had the lift with Salah coming back in. They missed his creativity in the first match. Uh, uh, but he wasn't really, uh, you know, able to get into the game much, uh, looked a little rusty as well for you? Yeah, it took him a while to get going. Um, you know, he got tackled fiercely a couple of times as well, which would have been uh, certainly an element of, of the Russian game plan was to, to stop Salah like we see against Brazil with Neymar. Um, and and they, it was tough for him. It, it's always hard coming off from like a, a four or five week layoff. And obviously the expectation, everybody's believing, believing he's the missing key. But as well as we talk about the confidence for Russia by, going, by winning 5-0, you have to think about how much damage losing 5-0 can do to, to the Saudis, which we might see in the next game as well. Uh, talk to us about uh, how things changed uh, in the second half. Because while there were some chances for Russia to start with uh, in the opening 45 minutes, uh, nothing uh, too clear cut. But then you had that horrendous, rather bizarre own goal from the Egyptian captain and the floodgates just opened. Yeah, the first half was, uh, was quite even. You know, it's a little bit scrappy at times. I don't think we see one clear-cut chance. I don't think there was a shot on target. Um, so it, but then, obviously, the own goal was, was, was one of the worst you'll see. Uh, real poor technique. Ended up coming off his shin. Uh, should, should have steadied himself, really, and gone with a side foot. And then, all of a sudden, the crowd are on the feet. You know, the Russians are at home, if you like. They get behind. They remember winning 5-0. They're now 1-0 up. And all of a sudden, you know, they look really confident. And they, they really put their, their foot down to the pedal then. Speak about uh, Denis Cheryshev because, uh, you know, this is a player who would have started the World Cup thinking he's going to spend a lot of time uh, on the bench because he wasn't part of the starting eleven. But then Zagoev gets injured in the first match. He comes on, he gets two goals there, he gets another great goal uh, uh, in this game. A fantastic performance for him. Yeah, it was, and he's, he's picking up some fantastic positions. Obviously, he's left-footed, he's playing on the left of a three. That's not really his natural position. You know, normally you'd probably see him as a, as a, as a number six, number eight midfielder, or possibly a number ten, um, you know, a box-to-box -box midfielder. But with him being on the left-hand side, the positions that he takes up are, are, are really something else. Uh, it's, it's tough for the opposition to mark him. And, and you know, we can, we can look at it as well, if you want, on, on the tactical. Obviously, Russia, we know that they start with this 4-2-3-1. Egypt was exactly the same but if we're talking about Chirishev and we're, and we're talking about his, his position you know his position for me is, is what's key now he plays on the on the left hand side in, in this kind of position but because he is is you know he's a central player when the ball's on on the right hand side where it is now he starts coming across into into these kind of positions at times you see him into these which where he got his goal in the previous game but in this game when the cross came in you know he's almost in, into this kind of position across the center forward I, th I think Zumba was the man that was in these kind of positions you know it, it can either be a full back getting down the wing if you like with the, with the ball played to him but like like I mentioned all of a sudden you see Chirishev 
you know, he's making these runs from here mm. all the way across across Zumba. Obviously, the, the, the defenders retreat a little bit, and the ball was cut back to him. And the rest is history, as you say. You know, he scores a great goal. So it's that it's that position really. It's who marks him. You know, really that the full back is the one that marks him. But you don't see a full back coming all the way across here. So it's communication that's needed. You have to pass on to other defenders, and people have to be aware of him. It may be a a retreating midfielder, but he is, he is getting some decent positions and that's the reason he scored three goals. And uh, Egypt did sort of invite a lot of this trouble on themselves, didn't they? Because I think you pointed out uh, that uh, you felt their back line was playing far too deep. Yeah, I thought what, what was instrumental in the game was Zuba, obviously the big forward, you know, he's, he's a real handful up front, uh, we, we know that anyway. Um, we know he can cause a lot, a lot of trouble in, in these kind of positions. You know, he's a, he's a big, big, big target man, hustle and a, and a bustler, if you like. And it's the long balls. You know, the, the goal he scored, he, he's probably ended up chesting the ball round about this kind of position on the edge of the box. And for me, the back four are far too deep. You know, it was nothing more than just a long ball into him. I think contesting the long ball was a, was a central midfielder. The back four have dropped off because that's because they're scared of his physicality. Mm. And then he brings the ball down in his chest, which for me is 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 a no-go. You know, you shouldn't be chesting the ball on the edge of the box. The, the back four should, should be up, they should be contesting it, and they should be heading the ball this way, which they didn't. So he chests the ball, he, he out-muscles the, the central defender, to be honest, and then he finds himself in, in this kind of position right. with only the goalkeeper to beat. And obviously we know he, he, he provided a, a great finish, which was just inside the far post. But that happens when you get physically roughed up as a back four or a central defender, you naturally start to drop because you don't want that, con that physical contact mm. and it enables people to bring the ball down on the chest and, and that shouldn't happen, a, a real poor goal if you was a, a head coach of the Egyptian side. Okay, so not, uh, not a great uh, match uh, from Egypt's point of view but a fantastic result from Russia's. Uh, they've got two wins from two now which means uh, that they are literally on the brink of the knockouts.